Hello friends, welcome to another uh, segment on my, of my series on the cholinergic system. In this video, I will introduce you to the nicotinic cholinergic receptors. Specifically, I'm going to try to give you a short guide that will help you in your own research understand what you're reading when you see weird assortments of receptor types. So the nicotinic cholinergic receptors are, the way to think of them is this, there are five sorts of genes that code for kinds of receptor subtypes. There are five receptor subtypes. One is called alpha, one is called beta, one is called delta, another is called gamma, and then the final one is called epsilon. Delta, gamma, and epsilon are not expressed in neuronal systems. So we don't need to talk about them in this conversation. We're going to instead focus on the alpha and beta types. Now what happens is this. In the brain, there are cholinergic neurons that respond to nicotine, uh, to nicotine. Those are called the nicotinic cholinergic neurons. Those neurons have receptors. Each individual receptor is made out of five genes that, is, that come in different assortments. This is called pentameric stoichiometry. So pen penta being uh, Latin for five. So you can have a different assortment. So for example, you can have homomeric uh, assortments of receptors, which have five of the exact same receptor gene, and you can have heteromeric uh, receptors, which have different assortments of genes. So the genes, by the way, are called CHRNA for the, for the alpha and delta, CHRNA and CHRNB. CHRNA2 to CHRNA9 are expressed in the brain, and CHRNB2 to CHRNB4 are also expressed in the brain. So in the brain, you can have a sor an assortment of any of these 17 genes combined together to create a receptor, an individual receptor. So that's the basic introduction to it. Now, in, in mammalian brains, well, you'll find some common types. So for example, the homomeric alpha-7 receptor is quite common. You'll also find the alpha-3, beta-4 receptor as quite common. Um, and by the way, every time I mention like an alpha, uh, alpha 3 or beta 4, that means there's a certain number of alpha 3s and a certain number of beta 4s combined together without any other kind of genes on that receptor. So in, for example, in Alzheimer's disease patients, um, not all of the uh, nicotinic cholinergic receptor, uh, receptor genes are downregulated or the recept not all of the nicotinic cholinergic receptor subtypes are downregulated at the same rate. So they experience um, al alpha-4, which is CHRNA-4, uh, are particularly down, uh, die out particularly uh, frequently. And the uh, receptor subtype that is particularly uh, activated by nicotine, which is uh, alpha-4, uh, beta-2, is particularly found to be lost in the brains of Alzheimer's disease patients. Um, and as you can tell from that, nicotine does not affect all of the receptor subtypes at the same affinity. It is particularly effective at the one I just mentioned, which is alpha-4, beta-2. Um, so, an interesting thing is that uh, we've mentioned before that nicotine upregulates receptor types, but it doesn't upregulate this uniformly in terms of receptor type or in terms of where the receptors are in the brain. In particular, um, there are some areas of the brain, including the medulla oblongata, uh, the uh, uh, certain parts of the cortex, and the hippocampus, that do not upregulate nicotinic cholinergic receptors. And this is quite informative and interesting. Uh, in fact, also, by the way, muscle does not upregulate the nicotinic cholinergic receptors. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are some receptor subtypes that do upregulate that we know about. So for example, the alpha sevens, which are quite significant, and as we'll find out later, they do upregulate. Um, the alpha threes upregulate which are homomeric, both of them, and the heteromeric alpha-4 beta-2, which is the main uh, target of nicotine, also upregulates. On the other hand, the alpha-4 beta-2 alpha-5 do not upregulate, and uh, the alpha-6 do not upregulate, and in, uh, in general, whenever there is a beta-3 in the receptor, it won't upregulate. So this is a brief overview of the complicating factors involved in the creation of the subtypes of nicotinic cholinergic receptors. I hope this will be useful for you in your own research when you check out how different agonists affect receptor subtypes. And it'll also be useful for the next video which, in which I'll begin to discuss the agonists of the nicotinic cholinergic system aside from nicotine and acetylcholine. 
I wish you a great day and we'll see you next time.